Pandemic. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. No, The Sopranos isn't about to start yet. It's time for audience participation, where you, the viewer, get to be the star as we spin the original Darod's Wheel. Original Wheel, original prizes. Over to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Peter. Yes, we've dusted off the old girl, and here she is. As, I'm obviously not referring to you, I'm referring to the wheel. <laughs> uh, but as you've raised it, uh, Pete, uh, who is our contestant this week? I have no idea. <laughs> right. Francis. Uh, yes, Sean, this is Joan. You are in the running for some fabulous prizes. Uh, Pete, talk us through them, will you? I have a moral objection to endorsing products. Uh, me too, Sean. No, it's in your contract, Pete. Okie dokie. On the original Darod's Wheel tonight, Joan, you could win this state-of-the-art audio cassette player from JVC. At $25, music has never sounded so audible. As easy as JVC? A rhetorical question worth pondering. Or maybe a £50 shopping spree at Woolworths or Food Fair is more to your liking. Woolworths and Food Fair. The last words in this sentence, except for these ones. Or how about this fabulous sewing machine from Faf? Yes, sirree. Whether it be a smart linen suit or one made from the eviscerated skin of your murder victims, then look no further than Faf. Faf, the P is silent, but my God, the machine isn't. Back to you, Sean. And Francis. Peter, tell us things, won't you? That's right, Sean. If you'd like to be on the Darod's wheel, all you need to do is be plucked unwittingly from our studio audience. And if you'd like to narrow the odds by actually being in the studio audience, please write to us at this address. Good seats are still available. As are these appalling ones. Back to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Peter. Well, now, while Francis is doing that, Pete, what's Ollie playing for? Sean, I have no idea what motivates these people. <laughs> no, Pete, I mean, tell, tell us about the prizes. Oh, but of course. Uh, tonight on Bobbing for Apples, Ollie could win this fantastic carrier air conditioning unit to the value of $100. Portable, cool and rectangular. Carrier, named after its inventor, Willis H. Carrier, and not after any tendency it may have to spread Legionnaire's disease. <laughs> Ugly? Why not attempt to conceal it with Vanda's new range of cosmetics? Women have been turning to Vanda for years to deceive their menfolk. When you think of Vanda Cosmetics, think of Vanda Cosmetics for when you're hideous. Or how about a multicoloured striped trailer? Handy for blending into that rainbow or just jackknifing in style on a deserted highway. Scanish, it means pasty in Ukrainian. Back to you, Sean. And Francis. Okay. Peter, tell us things. That's right, Sean. Interstate contestants on audience participation choose to stay at Sydney's fabulous Rockman Regency Hotel, but are forced by us to stay at this much cheaper one instead. The East Gippsland Hotel Motel gives new meaning to the phrase cockroach infested fire trap. <laughs> Gadzooks, is that the time? Let's crank up the funometer and roll out the carpet of merriment because. It's the audience participation segment where you, the viewer, get to be the star as tonight we play Daryl in the Barrel. Over to you, Sean and Sidekick. Thanks very much, Pete. You can win any one of these fabulous prizes, Pete. That's right, Sean. <laughs> and what are they, Peter? Oh, yeah, sorry. God, you think he'd know how to do this by now, wouldn't you? Tired of eating your Sunday roast raw? Why not cook it in an oven by Draffin? With its spacious interior and plenty of headroom, it's also perfect for ending it all. Yes, if you've stopped laughing, put your head in a draffin. <laughs> Penelope, I can see you in this revealing underwear from Fredericks of Fruville. Curse these x-ray eyes of mine. If only I could rip them from my skull and dash them into the sea. That's the last time I go to a mad scientist to have my cataracts looked at. <laughs> And what do red bags, a camera and a cassette player have in common? That's right, they can all be stowed in the cargo hold of a passenger aircraft. <laughs> and here comes the passenger aircraft. 
It's not this one, obviously. It's far too small. It's the Boeing Minus 2, built in the 60s so that mice could experience the thrill of air travel. <laughs> Three years and no bookings later, rodent travel went into voluntary receivership. <laughs> Their shattered dreams can be your diverting curio when you take home this five-foot freak of aeronautical design. <laughs> be the envy of people with no concept of worth with a Boeing Minus 2. Back to you, Sean and right. Penelope. Thank you very much, Pete. Peter, tell us things, won't you? That's right, Sean. When flying interstate or overseas, all our Daryl in the Barrel contestants choose to travel by aeroplane. Why risk death by ballooning or being shot from a giant cannon when planes are available? Some people are idiots. Back to you, Sean. Thanks very much, Pete. Unplug the hooch tub mother and festoon the cat with bunting. It's time for audience participation, where you, the audience, get to be the star as we spin the original Darod's wheel. Yes, original wheel, original prizes. Like this giant concrete statue of Carl Page. Marginally more lifelike than the actual Carl Page, seen here demonstrating the escape features of the new Green Falcon, it's a pleasant addition to any roof and makes regular garden gnomes seem dwarf-like and on a different altitude by comparison. Carl Page, the first and last names of a person with that identity. Or if you're one of those people who thinks it's funny because it's true, then you'll cack yourself over these beautiful encyclopedias from Britannica. 18 volumes, all of them inaudible. And like an S&M dominatrix who's eaten too many bananas, they're bound in leather. Normally valued at $1,800, tonight they're abnormally valued at negative 53 rubles. Well, why not get away from it all with a weekend of grey water rafting at the Werribee Sewage Treatment Works? Test your rafting skills and your ability to withstand odour on this two-day non-stop adventure battling the elements. Or should that be effluence? I'm serious, I can't read my handwriting. From Grey Water Tours, a company in liquidation. Over to you, Sean and Bozo. Uh, Francis. Sean. Pete. Thank you, Sean. Tonight, Beverly is playing for a picture of a car or two tickets to the first preview show of We Will Rock You on July 30th at the Regent Theatre. OK. Pete, tell us things, won't you? <laughs> That's right, Sean. All complaints about tonight's show should be addressed to Today Tonight, care of Channel 7, Mobs Lane, Epping, New South Wales, 2121. And by all means, feel free to slag off Naomi Robson as well. Back to you, Sean. Thanks very much, Pete. What's Matt Welsh? Oh, it doesn't matter. Pete, the prize read, if you will. Uh, certainly, Sean. Out aloud, Pete. Oh, but of course. Tonight on Bobbing for Apples, Matt has a chance of winning an old car. <laughs> what could be better than this 1976 Toyota Corona SE? Many things, you shriek. I wouldn't be seen dead in that, and you'd be right. With four on the floor, three on a match, two to get ready, and one for the road, this is the baby for you. See-through windows, luxury handbrake, and leather seats that'll have you saying, this is vinyl, I'm ringing Alan Fells. <laughs> yes, you won't know what hits you when you're run over by a Toyota Corona. <laughs> or how about this superb 1957 can of Mortine? Volatile, poisonous and easy to use. Doubles as a room freshener, hairspray and Santa snow. From antique aerosol insecticides, a company in liquidation. Or, or if you love fine handcrafted lounge room furniture, then look away now because this will appall you. Shoddily made, horribly upholstered, a welcome subtraction from any home. <laughs> Danish deluxe, it means comfort and style, but only according to the Bizarro Dictionary. Roll out the cat weasel goggling car, Sherman, and put some pants on that mule, because it's time for the segment one-eighth of Australia's talking about audience participation, where you, the audience, get to be the star tonight as we play... The numbers are right. Over to you, Sean and Laughing Boy. Thank you very much, Peter. And Francis, who do we have here? No one at all, Sean. He or she is still being selected by the McAuliffe tonight, Ghost. Well, while that's happening, let's find out what they'll be playing for. Pete. Sean. Francis. Len. Pete. Thanks, Len. <laughs> if you enjoy listening to a tranny but don't have anything by Carlotta on audio cassette, <laughs> why not try this portable radio by National? Sleek leatherette carrying case, AM frequency, tuner dial, mono speaker, and battery compartment with flange all add up to one thing. 
style with a capital letter, and with an optional earpiece, the trots have never been more enjoyable. The National Transistor Radio, I won't hear a word said against it, or indeed on it. Need to deliver a million dollar ransom? Then these, these beautiful suitcases from Bon Voyage are just what the desperate kidnapper ordered down the phone in his electronically altered voice. Perfect for leaving in a hollowed out tree or a train station locker. No cops or the old lady gets it. Bon Voyage, it's French for a river derchi. Or what about this beautiful elephant from Elephants of North Melbourne? Eight ton of this magnificent beast delivered to your door 24 hours a day. Startling April Fool's Day joke. Or an unusual diamond wedding anniversary present capable of goring the recipient. It's the perfect way to say, hey, I got you that elephant. Back to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Pete. Pete, what prize uh, is Michael really playing for tonight? That's right, Sean. Michael has a choice between two tickets to Falling Petals starring Caroline Craig or wine to the value of $5 from our not very good friends at Lens Liquor. All right, excellent. Pete, tell us things, won't you? That's right, Sean. If you'd like to be a contestant on Ernie's Wheel, just hop into the next freak wormhole that opens up in our space-time continuum and walk back to 1976. Back to you, Sean. Thank you very much indeed, Pete. Welcome back to the segment everybody is talking about. Well, I am at the moment anyway. Audience participation, where you, the viewer, get to be the star as they try their luck and we try their patience on the original Darod's Wheel. Over to you, Sean, and the other guy. Thank you very much, Pete. Pete, what can Jasmine hope to take home with it? A lingering sense of humiliation. Yes. <laughs> That, what about the prizes, though? Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Well, lime green is the new black this year, and what better way to wear it than paint it on this 1976 Holden Gemini? Heads will turn, as will many stomachs, as you drive past in this baby. Hear them gasp, particularly when you mount the curb and career through a shop window. <laughs> Holden Gemini, Australia's answer to the Corvette, assuming the question was very badly worded. <laughs> Or why not sit back and be mystified by a one-year subscription to Foxtel's Jimmy Hannon channel? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, devoted to Australia's 29th favourite television presenter. And what better way to endure him than on this beautiful 18 and 3 quarter inch JVC TV? U and JVC, four letters of the alphabet. <laughs> Or what about a 1958 upright stove with the top of the range oven hood to the value of 14 guineas? Gas, gas operated and with a door that both opens and shuts, it's the perfect gift for someone without a stove. New World, so good they named it once. Back to you, Sean, and... Uh, oh, sorry, it's gone. Uh, it doesn't matter. Peter, tell us things, won't you? That's right, Sean. If you'd like to be on the Darod's Wheel, just break into the Channel 9 studios here at Bendigo Street, Richmond, and lash yourself to it with a length of rope. Or alternatively, put your name and address on the back of an envelope. Not the front of the envelope, because obviously if you do that, you'll just be posting it to yourself. <laughs> All entries go into a drawer, and at the end of each week, a shredder. Back to you, Sean. Thanks very much, Pete. Ratchet those monkeys up a gelatin tool booth, Corporal, and get me a pasty, Maureen, because it's time for audience participation, where you, the viewer, get to be the star as we play Bobbing for Apples. Over to you two dudes. Thank you, Pete. And uh, Francis, whom do we have here? No one, Sean. The McCulloch tonight uh, <laughs> strumpet is presently enticing a member of our audience up here, even as we speak. No matter. Let's find out what they'll be playing for when they do. Pete! That's right, Sean. Our lucky contestant this week will be the one missing out on winning this outdoor furniture set from Sunlander. Once you experience the total sitting pleasure of Sunlander, you won't stand for anything else except for the national anthem. Sturdy, beautiful, modern. All words which can be found in Webster's Dictionary. In fact, with 3,075 pages of them and in an order which can only be described as alphabetical, you can't go wrong. Webster's, the last word in dictionaries, but only if they leave out anything starting with X, Y and Z. <laughs> Tired of tiny fridge magnets? Sick to death of your children's drawings cluttering up the door when you want to get out the ghee? Then why not try the Disguise Your Fridge as an Oven Giant Fridge Magnet? 
Confuse your child and double the appearance of ovens in your kitchen today or tomorrow, depending on when you start using it. Back to you, Kath and Kim. Thanks very much, Pete. Uh, no, but Pete, seriously, <laughs> what's Timothy really playing for? Sean, Timothy has a choice between this beautiful framed Dogbert Fulton cartoon of the McAuliffe Tonight team or two tickets to see Craig David live in concert. Well, well, Timothy, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult one, I'm sure. Pete, tell us things, won't you? That's right, Sean. All losing contestants on McAuliffe Tonight take home a sale of a century board game. It's a lot easier to play and the questions are as freaking easy as... Back to you, Sean. <laughs> Thanks very much, Pete. The prize reads Pete. That's right, Sean. Hey, Groovers, how about a month's worth of invisible groceries from our good friends at Claude Rain Supermarkets? <laughs> Quality meats, colourful vegetables, attractive dairy produce. Who'd know with this lot? See-through food stops the kids raiding the fridge, confuses mice, and means you'll never have to wash a dish properly again. Mind you, it is radioactive and it will kill you. Claude Rain Supermarkets, so you'll need a pretty big umbrella. Impressed with the superb cleaning action of the Enyo dusting mitt, but want to clean your household surfaces even faster than normal because of some psychological problem? <laughs> then why not try the Enyo jumpsuit on for size? Rap dance, frottage, or just writhe about strangely to rid your home of filth? Enjo, it's Latvian for the bison are giggling. <laughs> Vulcan have been making heaters since as long as I can remember. This means that as my memory goes, they're becoming less experienced with time. In a few years, they'll have no freaking idea what they're doing. <laughs> that may explain this red wine boiling kit for those who like their claret and themselves warmer than room temperature. Although be warned, you could eventually spontaneously combust. Vulcan, the Greek god of destructive fire. Perhaps not the best name for a heating manufacturer. Boil up the krill, Mahatma, and scrape the Tarzan grip off that chastening apricot. Because it's time for the part of the show that makes deal or no deal look like a pallid imitation of who wants to be a millionaire. Not all that difficult, I grant you, and really nothing to do with us. Yes, audience participation, where you, the audience, get to be the star tonight as we play The Numbers Are Right. Over to you, John and Googie. Thank you very much, Peter. And Francis, whom do we have here? Uh, no one, Sean. He, she, them or it is uh, still being selected by the McAuliffe tonight human fireball. All right, well, <laughs> while that's happening, let's find out what they'll be playing for. Pete! Sean! Francis! Leanne! <laughs> Pete! <laughs> Thanks, Leanne. What better way to get some sleep at the end of the day than by going to bed? Hypnotic spiral patterns on the quilt and sheets ensure that you'll be in a deep, deep slumber before you can say, get that woman to a doctor immediately. <laughs> this bedroom furniture is valued at Fred Spoon's bedroom furniture valuations of North Ride, and it's certainly worth it. From Captain Snooze, and remember the apostrophe makes no difference when you're pronouncing the word. <laughs> or how about this for a magnificent china cabinet? Pretty poor substitute, I'd have thought. It's finished in teak veneer before it's even started and stained with whatever happens to fall on it. And I don't know what fell on that poor woman, but that gorse poncho's not going to clean it off. Maple, a curious name for a product predominantly made of chipboard. Or how about these old standbys? Red luggage, camera and slide projector. At least that weirdo model's not in this one showing off a creosote stained bod. Oh, my godfather, put some clothes on you, hussy. Or at least stand on a tarpaulin. Back to you, Red and Wilbur. Thanks very much, Pete. Pete, tell us things, won't you? That's right, Sean. Block printing began in China during the 7th century. Semaphore was invented in 1767 so that race results could be signalled from the course to a man while he lay in bed. The Great Pyramid of Cheops is 146.3 metres tall. Back to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Pete. Swap down the poop deck, Snorky, and clap your ears together like a walrus on acid. It's time for audience participation, where you, the audience, get to be the supernova as we play the all-new Leopardy. Over to you, Bung and Olivson. Thank you very much, Pete. Let's find out what our contestant is playing for tonight. Pete! Francis. Sean. Lynn. Pete. Francis's knee. Pete. With a knee. Sean. Pete! That's right, Sean. 
Stop living and start decomposing in your brand new house made entirely of Manchester. <laughs> Flimsy yet colourful, it features a variety of sheeted walls, some with strings, as well as this striking Duna facade. And it comes to you from Little Tents. Aren't you a Little Tents? <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Then get away from it all on your new bike. It's from Repco, a name that's almost an anagram of Epoch. <laughs> Two words, brown and hideous. No, not that model sun-shriveled hide. The appalling couch she's sitting on. It's a Jason recliner rocker. Need I say more? Yes, probably. Dear God. <laughs> And God help anyone foolish enough to try and watch anything on this TV. What with that grinning lunatic stuck to the bloody screen? I mean, freak me sideways, it's a television, not a photo album, JBC. Capiche? Or how about this delightful Russian mail-order bride? Packaged in sturdy bubble wrap and cardboard, she comes to you from plop-offs of Vladivostok and leaves you six months later when the visa comes through. Back to you, Tango and Cash. Thank you very much, Pete. You could win this. That's right, Sean. Louise, you'll enjoy 17 free hours of open heart surgery. Courtesy of the first year diploma of health students at Box Hill Tate. Anesthetic not included. Or Ricky Martin CD and tickets to take away. Excellent. Okay, Louise, now the choice is the choice is yours. Hey, tell us things, won't you? That's right, Sean. I call this one summer. Oh, funny pony, my only true friend in life. Tomorrow, you're glue. Back to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Pete.